Hi guys, I know <laughs> I didn't upload nothing in the last two and a half year or something like this. Because we are a little bit busy with uh, really big uh, projects, including <laughs> a new studio, of course. Yeah, this is the new location. Maybe <laughs> the studio will be moved there or into the house. Or oh, there's the other one downstairs. Uh, at the moment it's not clean. Uh, yeah, um, that's it. That's the new place. I guess have you do there. It's so nice over there in this uh, small forest. Um, or maybe there. And there is a huge basement with uh, lots of space. Uh, I don't know. A moment. Hmm? Yeah, I think you get the picture. Mm. One of my uh, subscribers, he asked me to upload a new studio walkthrough video. <laughs> What's going on? Basically, this is the electronic lab, what I'm using to fix all of my old uh, synthesizers, uh, amplifiers, power source, whatever old uh, type of electronics. And this um, workstation here is also under changing. So the, the new setup will be much more simpler, much more concentrated and probably uh, will be uh, some kind of PC based solution. Let's be honest guys, uh, to keep alive all this old gear, by the way, they are really lovely gears. I don't know, uh, maybe you, you can uh, uh, maybe you can recognize that one, yeah? Uh, so they are really lovely gears. All of it, of course, it's, it's working perfectly. But to keep all these old gears alive, it's a kind of a hassle. This kind of laboratory setup is not any more efficient with my new life uh, style. All those cabinets, the full width parts with full width uh, analog parts, uh, as you can see everywhere, SMD all type, uh, through hole, really special stuff to just to keep alive all of my uh, old gears, this uh, full SMD. So here a lot, a lot of parts, transistor diodes, car capacitors, whatever. This is my old um, analog uh, mixer. I still love it. I still have a plan to somehow uh, put back into my uh, studio setup because I modified a channel already for, for some kind of uh, summing mixer. Now let's go to the next part, which is the guest room or playroom or... Now here we have a uh, few special speakers. Now the first one is a Telephone Can Telex 2 and I really like this speaker to, to listen back uh, works and even just uh, to, to watch movies on a TV because it's a three-way system but look at this and this is absolutely true. But, uh, let me tell you guys this is one of the most uh, natural sounding speaker ever what I heard in my life. Now this one is something special. You must uh, check out the video what I made about this speaker. This is the Kenwood LS770. Beautiful speaker, very nice response, really detailed uh, on, a, on a high, it, it, it's, it's just sound fantastic. It's a real uh, classic um, hi-fi speaker. <laughs> this guy is something special because this uh, deck has the normal uh, uh, Dolby solution, but it also has DBX. Eh? By the way, this is nothing fancy. This is a Technics uh, RSB40, uh, but this is why it's, it's a really special one because it uh, has a DBX uh, noise reduction and it has this MX2 uh, head, I think. Yeah, this is the MX head. Uh, sounds really nice. Really classic -y. still have a VHS uh, videotape uh, player because I still have a lot of old uh, VHS cassettes with all the clips, uh, whatever, so I really like to, to watch them. This guy, uh, it's, a, it's a really nice uh, TIG X1000. Unfortunately, this is not the version M, okay? So this is not uh, a studio version, but with a little bit of tricks, um, I made almost sounds like the, the studio version. 
Had I already replaced uh, to the M version, I made a modification on the electronics. So now it's um, playing only on one direction because it's using the full uh, width of the tape. And uh, sometimes I'm using this real to real tape uh, recorder just to print um, my music on it, <laughs> record with the DBX, and then uh, pull it back to the uh, DAW system because this. Uh, DBX and uh, with the tape, it's it's give uh, to the hip hop song some kind of really nice saturation and uh, some really transparent compression and expansion type of sound. What you cannot do on a DAW, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I really like the the sound of uh, this uh, real to real uh, tape uh, recorder. So let's go to the studio. Okay, <laughs> so now I'm on 99% ready with this studio, but unfortunately the life is changing. We sold the building and we have to move out in two or three years or something like this. I already working on a new place. Uh, we are looking for for the best uh, uh, solution for the new studio, which will be not in Germany, in other country. Soon I will upload the video about it. Let's uh, start from the bike booth yeah <laughs> we are using this mostly for uh, video and uh, uh, television synchronizations very small jobs time to time uh, singers are coming and time to time uh, we have here three or four guys that's standing inside so that's why i have this uh, cheapo behringer uh, uh, headphone amplifier by the way nothing wrong with uh, behringer stuffs you can build a really nice home studio with Behringer stuff. When we are doing a video synchronization, you have to show the, the video to, to your artist. And uh, uh, it's a, not an easy job to find a good monitor with a good uh, power supply inside, which will not generate for you electric noise. By the way, now with this AKG 420, I think this is the 420, we have nothing issue with the, with the electric uh, noises or with the hum or with the rumble. This is a really solid, really nice uh, microphone. Uh, by the way, this AKG 420 uh, microphone, it's a really good choice for home recording studios. I'm using this uh, almost 10 years or 12 years, something like this. When it came to the market, I already, yeah, I immediately bought one and uh, nothing wrong with it. It's just a solid, workhorse you can trust on it sounds nice sounds balanced so nothing too moody nothing too she 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 it by the way i don't like this mic whoever the hell bought this mic system don't be the son of a bitch to put it in i'll tell you these people no this mic is terrible this stupid mic keeps popping it's a really nice really uh, well balanced uh, microphone and this is coming in this uh, really nice uh, lovely box uh, uh, bayer dynamic dt 150 very nice, uh, very stable, really good uh, workhorse in a studio. Don't go too fancy uh, with, the, with the headphone in your uh, mic booth. It's, it's not make sense. This one give you a really nice insulation. So on, on the air, so nothing from the headphone can enter into your microphone. And this is one of the most uh, important thing in your mic booth. Okay, so make sure you are not getting uh, feedback from your headphone to the microphone. Next item is this uh, rack cabinet. So here I have the input and output interfaces and I'm using uh, the Waves uh, sound grid system. So what does this mean? We have a DSP server uh, in the kitchen zone and all these uh, audio interfaces, they're sending the signal into the sound grid network. So from the sound grid network, all the signal is going to the DSP server and to the sound grid uh, studio setup. Back, back to the cabinet, okay? This uh, top section, this is my audio interface, which is connecting all these gears, including the, um, the monitor uh, controller section and other uh, goodies here into the sound grid uh, mixer and from the sound mix mixer of course we are sending a lot of signal to here so this is the two uh, unit for that 
This one is purely analog, mm, so it's 24 channel input and uh, 12 channel output, plus other, a few other channels, digital here on the front, input output, headphone mix uh, and uh, work clock. Now the next one is a mostly digital uh, I.O. board, uh, really nice uh, unit, really nice sounding unit. It has also 8 uh, channel analog input and 8 channel analog output. It has two uh, headphone mix and it has a really nice sound. On, on the back side there is other microphone input, sounds fantastic, it's a 96 kilohertz uh, unit. So the usage of this DigiGrid IOC is mostly to drive all of my external effect units and this is the first converter which is connected to the mic booth. Of course I have another line which is going to the Art Voice channel. So we have an option to record directly through the dry uh, input for the sound grid or we can do a little bit of uh, processing on our EQ and on the, on the compressor of the Art Voice channel. This is the CX6R. Uh, I think I have uh, one, the PLG1 board is inside, which is the um, mm, piano mm, board. But uh, I have also a really nice collection of uh, other samples from older Yamaha units. And I really like the sound of this one. You can do really weird uh, stuff with that uh, because it has a software on a computer so you can you can do whatever you want with this uh, really sophisticated, really big, heavy uh, digital synthesizer engine inside. Really, really nice uh, synthesizer. Next one, Roland XV5080, absolute beast. I have inside only four expansion boards. Some people are saying this is the nicest sounding uh, uh, rack synthesizer ever Roland produced. I kind of agree with that. Uh, of course I have a software for it and oh my goodness, so it's a 32 channel MIDI channel, 8 stereo individual outputs and inputs and whatnot. It's a, it's a beast of a synthesizer. Doesn't matter, maybe one day I will make a video about it, but there is a tons of video on YouTube you can find about uh, the XV5080. Now the next one, real special one. It's a Emu Hollywood Gold E4X family, one of the top notch from the Emu. What is this? This is basically a very sophisticated, very DSP driven, crazy sampler and uh, synthesizer. How I can explain this one? Uh, this is the king of all of the Emu. This is why it's called uh, Hollywood because originally this was the synth engine what uh, the old movies used for creating this really cinematic, uh, really heavy, lushy, really interesting um, uh, music or tracks for mostly for mu uh, movies. Back in the days, this was so expensive, was about six thousand dollar or something. Meanwhile, the normal EMU, the four, uh, the E four X, you can get in back in the days like for $1,000, dollars this was about $6,000 on that time. So you can imagine, 16 individual output, 32 channel MIDI, TSP processing, really nice sounding filters and complex mixer, multi-layering techno, whoa, 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 a lot. Uh, I still don't know how it's working, <laughs> so uh, you can add to it a HDD that is inside one, of course, you can load the, the, the patches and the, the samples from the floppy disk, you can add here, of course, this uh, new USB or SD card version, there is a SCSI interface on the a bag, there is two DSP board on it, and uh, you can expand the memory, you can add the ROM modules to it, so all of the EMU ROM cards, which is, looks like a, sing, um, like a normal memory module, tick, 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 you can plug into it and you can get a EMU more fat or whatever EMU synthesizer inside in this unit. Sounds fantastic. The filters are really good. It has the new version of EOS 4.10. I think this is the latest one. And you can see how much different uh, 
how much different things I have inside. So ROM, SCSI, inputs, output board, DSP board, whatever. Yeah, this is a real beast. So the next one is um, the Yamaha SPX2000. This is a really high-end unit. Money Studios uh, used in the past. This has a really unique um, mm, Revex engine. I, I, if I remember good, this is the name. So the Revex engine has inside uh, a room simulation, reflection simulation, wall quality, air temperature, all, the, all many different uh, uh, really magical things what you can adjust. But uh, the, the Yamaha produced a really nice software for it. And you can see in 3D how your uh, reflection and um, the, the, the frequency response is changing when you play with the parameters. By the way, all the, the presets inside, they're so good. <laughs> you just have to find the preset and you don't have to play with it. Um, it it's just, it's just, uh, it just sounds fantastic. Uh, you know what, let me, let, me, let me show you. So this is channel 6 and so this is my wireless. And uh, now I'm sending post fader everything to the SPX2000, yeah? And I, I hope you can hear it. By the way, later on, the Yamaha took many presets, including the engine itself, the DSP engine itself, into many other uh, Yamaha products. Okay, next one. It's a little bit uh, not so studio gear. Uh, this is the Lexigon MX400. Why I like it? Because it has four individual input and four individual output. So you can drive this puppy in double stereo or one uh, line stereo, but you can pro uh, process four DSP engine on your inputs. One MX400, you can add to your mixer as four effect uh, unit. The usage in my studio of this gear, of course, I can uh, insert this one to any uh, signal chain of my old uh, instruments. It has a USB on the back, so you can do a lot of tricks. There is a really nice uh, editor for it. Recommendation, absolutely. It's a cheap uh, solution, MX400. You can find it on eBay and secondhand for $100 or something like this. So on the end, this is a really nice uh, starter effect engine for your home recording studio. Next one, TC Electronics uh, Fireworks. Super rare unit. Actually, I don't know how it's working. <laughs> it has a lot of uh, uh, pre-made DSP processor unit, a lot, lot of engines inside. A super um, complicated uh, multi-effect unit. Because I have no clue how it's working, I tried to make for it um, a software to control the engine. I failed. So how I'm using it now, I'm just find some nice preset and I pick, I press the load button and then I'm playing mostly with this uh, knob here on the end. Purpose in my studio, I put this unit as an insert on my uh, Casio CZ1 because it has a really dry Casio type of sound. Yeah? Yeah? So you can imagine uh, what you can do with this fireworks with the CZ1. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I have no clue how it's working. Now, the, the next one, I know how it's working exactly. Uh, most of the case, I'm loading the preset number two, poof, uh, which is the perfect emulation of the original 2290 delay from TC Electronic. By the way, I have other one, which is this new uh, small TC2290. I don't know, the, the software sounds to me a little bit uh, too soft and um, it has a little bit of uh, processing time. Meanwhile, this one is zero, okay? So you can imagine, of course, I'm driving it with digital input, digital output, so there is no delay, there is no noise, and uh, it's just, it's just perfect. And doesn't matter what I'm sending through it, like a delay, I get back the exact sound of the 2290, 
closely. How I know? Because in a past I used a lot the original 2290. That was the only delay unit what we had in my studio while I learned uh, mixing. So that's why I have uh, this unit. By the way, Waves um, tried to make uh, something similar. Yeah, so this is the um, multi tap delay solution from uh, Waves. Sounds nice, sounds fantastic. Nothing problem with it, but somehow, somehow. Eh, eh, eh. I have a plan to get a original 2290, but the prices are so high now on our eBay, uh, I can't afford it at the moment. It's still a dream. Okay, next one. Really nice uh, multi effect unit, mostly for voice, for singing, for talking, for speaking, for whatever, for human voice. Of course, we, we are using for a <laughs> different purpose. Mostly, I driving through the DX7, okay? <laughs> and uh, just uh, driving with the, the patches and uh, time to time is producing uh, really weird uh, <laughs> noises. Um, but normally, we are using this one as an insert effect on a, on a voice uh, channel. And this is what we are feeding back to the mic booth because after that, whoever is singing, everybody loves it because it's make the sounds really fat and big sounding. It has a really nice plate reverb inside. Delays are really nice. It also has uh, auto correction. So when the singer is singing, I can, because the Sound Studio has monitor controller, so I can set up here four different uh, headphone mix. So I can switch between the, the headphone mixes uh, so I can listen the singing, like how it, sh how it sounds with the, with the, with the final uh, mix. So this is a really nice unit. Of course, you can use this one as your uh, main um, analog to digital converter in your studio because it has a USB port, so uh, so for the money, I, I think this is a really great unit if you want to set up a, a channel for your uh, voice uh, strip. I really like it and that's it. I, I highly recommend to, to get one or from the family because the uh, Vo VoiceWorks family has many different units. There is this very small one, what you can put the front of the your microphone and you can play uh, by yourself, or there is other one uh, which is not the plus, the normal one, the voice works, and uh, I, I think they released also in software version. I'm not sure. Highly recommended. Next one. <laughs> this is a uh, bad boy here, and uh, this is a really old multi effect unit. Uh, kind of sounds dirty. Even I don't think, even I think it's running only on. 12 bit or 14 bit or something like this. I really like the sound of it. The usage here in my studio is only one. <laughs> or as an analog insert in to these guys. Or we are using this unit to drive the headphone amplifier in the mic booth with some kind of basic reverb and basic uh, compressor for the singer. The processor signal is instant on the output and uh, the other good is here you can set the mix on analog mode so you don't have to dive in menus like for example in this guy yeah you have to go to a different sub menu to adjust the, the 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 level of the output here you have like a normal stupid port meter so in one second uh, we can find uh, the best uh, setting for the, the singer in the mic booth. By the way, this kind of old uh, effect, engine, effect uh, engines nowadays they are so cheap on eBay. If I remember good, I paid for this one 20 euro, like eight years ago. And yesterday I saw this one on eBay for 11 euro. Uh, I highly recommend to, to get uh, old units because you can play with it. You can learn a lot from those old units how they 
the old engineers uh, did uh, their work. So then you can apply all this knowledge on your DAW. Now, the next one. This is a really um, weirdo here. This is uh, a CD recorder and a CD player. The usage of this unit in my studio, um, how I can say, CD writer, because this guy is 100% CD red book compatible. So anything what you produce from this boy to the disc, you can be sure it's 100% red book compatible with CD text, with the proper spacing, and all sorts of uh, CD uh, magics. Plus, this unit, the ML9600, has a finalizer compressor inside. This is uh, uh, LSS RA150 from the same age when they produced the, the, the mastering uh, CD recorder. This is like a middle class. This one is a bad boy. This is a 300 and I have other one. At the moment, maybe you can see, I just removed from here. I have other one, which is the 500. So what the purpose of uh, these amplifiers here? Uh, I had a setup here with some kind of three-way um, uh, mastering speaker uh, solution. And this is the amplifiers what I use for. So the 500 drive the sub, the 300 drive all the mid-range, and the 150 drive only the high ends. Uh, and I have here another one, which is uh, Again, an RA150, and the RA150 is a perfect driver for my Yamaha NSTEM X. Okay, this is my mixer desk. Um, oh, okay, developed by myself, so everything wood, multi layer wood with glue together. Maybe you can see everything is handmade. For the purpose, it's modular, so I can change the, the distance, the spacing. I can move this one forward or backward. I can move the, this part with the speaker a little bit back. It's a kind of uh, DIY design. I really like it. Mm, it's turned out to great. And it has a lot of other functions, so you can put here your other keyboard for the Cubase, for example. And... Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. No, nothing fancy. This is only a table. Not what what is on the table is a different story. There is no studio without Behringer. As I told you guys, it doesn't matter who I visited, which studio where I went in my life, everybody had at least one or two Behringer stuff. Nothing wrong with the Behringer, okay? Don't be shy. If you don't have the amount of money to buy really high-end stuff for your studio, don't worry. Behringer always has something, something. In my case, I'm still using the Ultra Cure Pro to do my RTA, okay? There is a RTA microphone input on the back, what you can place here on your listening position, puff, here, and you can do a complete RTA check in your studio for how much I paid for this, uh, if I remember good, 45 euro or something, 10 years ago or 8 years ago. And this has a fantastic EQ. If you ask me, there is a really good dynamic processor and studio grade. So 24 bit, 96 kilohertz. You can modify the converters. Even there is a company who is uh, working uh, like, uh, what's their name? Something black. So they're modifying this unit to sounds like uh, a real professional high-end unit. So they're replacing the clocks inside, the converters, the capacitors, and some resistors. And then this El Cheapo Behringer units became a first-class studio gears. Now, top of it, there is this really lovely old-fashioned graphic uh, equalizer. Usage of this to listen, because you, you have like immediate bypass, okay? So you can put in, or you can do a bypass. And this is my, um, how I can say, uh, foo, it's uh, difficult. Um, so it has a low pass and a high pass filter. 
you can do a contouring so when um, uh, how I can explain this uh, most of the time I'm, I'm listening the NS10 on a fine MX or my other Yamaha HS7 or 70 what is this 7 speakers without any kind of EQ or correction like dry as is but sometimes I have to listen back everything like how people will hear it in the home in some kind of air cheapo hi-fi or good sounding old classical hi-fi so with this two contour here I can kind of emulate the the lewdness ah no that's the right word so the lewdness button on uh, on uh, normal uh, home uh, hi-fis by the way this is the opal uh, bss fcs 966 this is one of the best uh, graphical eq on a market what you can get on second hand and it sounds fantastic classical with almost no noise and it just it sounds so good uh, fully balanced input balanced outputs and uh, um, it sounds really natural I I cannot say it sounds uh, like a perfect EQ like a modern digital EQ but it sounds so nice okay even time to time I'm using this one on final mixes to find a little bit of a little bit of correction on a very very tiny changes on frequencies because this EQ has constant Q eh? now the next one is a different story this is the dbx uh, quantum 2 is a mastering unit i made a lot of video with this and about this i think i will make one more because i have a plan to to replace the the converter inside or a little bit improve the um, the analog sound of it because it's so precise and so it has a like 0.003% distortion and really high end uh, crazy stuff. Uh, somehow it sounds to me a little bit dry. I have a plan to put some salt and pepper inside and a little bit, little bit uh, paprika and some Hungarian sausage. <laughs> I don't think so anybody made any kind of VST or virtual uh, replacement of this unit or maybe the new TC electronic finalizer VST in your DAW uh, but you know what this is DBX so <laughs> for hip hop for trance for classic uh, techno perfect solution the bass the low ends the saturation is just mwah. now the next one is the sun sculpture uh, mc624 monitor controller i built it by myself if you have a plan to buy a proper professional absolute high-end analog monitor controller nothing else like this nothing for the money you cannot get nothing which can close to this one nowadays they're selling it uh, ready so you don't have to build for yourself around 900 uh, euro or 1000 euro even worth every penny money inputs uh, six inputs uh, four outputs plus the sub channel completely analog everything and completely and this is the key completely balanced from the input all the inside and the output everything balanced super 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 quality this one is uh, nothing fancy is just my uh, uh, controller for my uh, security camera system and there is a reason for that I will explain to you guys in one other video what happened here because I got robbed five times in a line yeah crazy so I spent a little bit uh, money on a camera and other security systems workstation he is living there okay this is um a self-built uh, sound workstation uh, but it's kind of outdated so it's already three years old um, the spatial about this uh, 
specific sound unit what I built because by the way on in the past I used the HP workstation maybe you can see so this is the 4 uh, 840 I had the uh, Z8 and this is my old 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 very old uh, thingies server file server whatever so I always used sound based workstation for audio processing and the reason for that sounds a super stable like rock solid I don't know even one one time when my HP Z840 uh, frozen or restarted or anything this is why I'm using always sound uh, this one it has the um, sound E2280 sound which is a really unique one because this is the only one sound in an Intel processor family which has inside the graphic processor of course I have a Nvidia 2080 Ti with water cooling yeah maybe you can see there on this sound it's just so smooth it's just you play with the mouse and it's a blah 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 My mixing solution is based on the uh, Waves sound grid network and I have two mixer solution the LV1 64 channel 64 testero channel or the sound grid the studio 64 channel uh, mixer the, the difference between the two um, the LV1 has to use the other computer and I have over there a small one to drive uh, the, the controlling of the DSP server. The Sony Studio is working together with your DAW as a um, sound interface, yeah, and a mixer in one uh, solution. The LV1, of course, because it's made for the live uh, uh, PA or live uh, or big studios, in every one of course you can make much more complicated things much more crazy things but for the dra daily drivers hmm, sound is studio 64 channel yeah how it's working it's really simple uh, i have a dsp in my kitchen i have here these two big uh, touch screen with the multi touch so i can call my uh, channel strips here and this is my channel filter here i have a, a built-in original eq with many really nice uh, presets now have a look on a dynamic processor eh? this is something really beautiful i really like it but because this is a digital software based mixer solution and interface and patch bay and matrix mixer and uh, <sighs> headphone mixer and monitor matrix mixer yeah so here is your monitor matrix mixing here is your aux uh, matrix uh, mixing yeah here is your group uh, channel mixing and here is your uh, linkage here is your uh, external studio rack here is your custom mixer setup so here i can call here uh, if i want to put only the xv50 plus my uh, um, other channels for example the artwork channel now i can use the artwork channel together with my xv5080 and that's it all the rest i don't care i i can put it in a mute group so whatever really really versatile mixing solution much more sophisticated than anything else on the market nowadays as a digital mixer console this is my studio mixer and my studio interface because all of the patch bay yeah and all the input interface for this uh, mixer solution can act like your direct input okay to your DAW and vice versa so this is the amount of channels that I can process through this uh, mixer solution from the waves so you can imagine if you want to build a similar system in analog no way if you want to build a similar system in um, traditional digital consoles it's about hundred thousand dollar yeah but with this uh, waves uh, solution because everything is software based and is is just uh, instant and really smart and really 
uh, cool solution. If you ask me, this is the perfect solution for home recording studios. Why? Because you can grow. You can start your Wave Soundgate system with two channels. Then you can grow to eight. Then you can grow to 16. You can grow to 32. You can grow to 64. You can drive only with the built-in uh, channel strip or, as I'm using it in, in many other uh, tracks, for example, in the, for example, virus, yeah? So, the virus synthesizer. Where is my SSH? Here. Here is my SSH channel strip. So this is what you can do with this system. If I want, I can build up a complete API mixer. API hmm, 550B. You can build like a really nice sounding analog uh, console. Full API or full SSL or you know one, let me show you other one. So now I have on my Yamaha DX7, yeah, on a channel strip, a really nice red analog input channel strip. Yeah, with all the goodies. There is no delay. It's always 0.6 millisecond, maximum 2 or 3 millisecond or something like this. Amazing technology. And if you ask me, all those uh, plugins in this mixer, of course, that sounds like the original. So they have a taste, they have uh, the harmonics, they have the noise. I think I finished with the, with the mixer solution. Uh, you can understand what's going on here. Uh, so what I have here, this is a video switcher where I can switch between uh, monitors and between cameras. Yeah. So there is a place for uh, uh, <laughs> camera. There is other place for other camera over there. So I can switch between uh, different sources and all the signal sent to this uh, recorder, which can record in ProRes, Auto ProRes, with money audio inserts, uh, so I can record 8 channel audio to the video. Of course, I can record 64 channel, 64 stereo channel to my DAW, but I can make here some kind of submix from the mixer to the video file, which is a really nice one. Now the next unit is uh, Artforce channel, um, really nice uh, microphone channel strip. It has a compressor, a preamp with adjustable impedance, very, very important. Then you have a DSL, a compressor, EQ, and level meter, and whatnot, and analog to digital converter. So how I'm running this system together with the Waves sound grid, this one, the Artwash channel, getting the clock signal from this interface, you see this green, okay? And then this was channel analog to digital converter sending the digital signal to here, okay? Now, now you can see how versatile and how good this sound grid system if you have uh, a good uh, interfaces because you can connect anything, analog, digital, outside converter, inside converter, uh, patch bay, digital patch bay, uh, processing unit, analog processing unit, digital, CD, computer, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Artwork channel, only two uh, purpose. Purpose number one, mic booth, okay? Microphone recorded here, converted to digital and send it to the uh, input channel for the mixer. Purpose number two, my microphone, okay, it's connected to the back because this unit has two microphone inputs. So when you connect something in the front, it's disabling the back one. So when you remove that one, the back one is in operate. So this is the converter what I'm using for my video recordings for uh, YouTube. Now um, in the corner, because you ask, somebody asked me, this is my sub. Uh, this is a Yamaha sub. Of course, it's uh, driven together with the Yamaha monitors. I'm not uh, doing mastering or final mixing with subwoofers anyway. Uh, the purpose mostly to get this oomph. So when I 
playing with my synthesizers here, I, I need uh, some kind of move. Not this boy here. Um, time is changing, yeah? So, um, this laptop has four times more speed and computing capacity than my big water-cooled box over there. What the purpose of this laptop? Of course, as I said to you guys, now we are on a phase when we have to pack all of this, all, all of this solution, and we have to shrink it down into a mobile solution. Because today I'm in Berlin, tomorrow I'm in Barcelona, then I will be in Budapest, and then in London, or whatever. The files and the recording and the wave files and the, the, the DAW um, files are sitting on a network storage, which are connected to different uh, cloud uh, services, so I can reach the, the, the files with, with this laptop anywhere in the world. So Waves has a really good plan if you're buying from them uh, a lot of plugins or you're buying the plugins in bundles, your primary license can be sit on your LV1 mixer or on your DAW with a USB stick and you can utilize the secondary license on your mobile workstation. What I need for this solution? A really nice sounding audio interface, which is the Moto Ultralight MK5, which has a mixer inside, a DSP processor, so you can do basic EQ and compressor, whatever, on your uh, local mix. Then, uh, of course, I will use um, the Bayer Dynamic uh, 1990 Pro headphone, some kind of USB switchable hub, yeah? so I can switch on and off uh, different uh, stuffs from the laptop, and one, and one, only one, really old-fashioned, really lovely, oh my god, how I love this uh, lavalier microphone, only a small microphone for a commentary, uh, whatever, on uh, YouTube uh, live events. And this will be my solution for my mobile uh, traveling uh, production, yeah? It was a little bit uh, high price what I had to pay for it, but guys, there is no other solution. It was the cost what I paid for it. Synthesers, Yamaha AN1X, one of my oldest friends in the studio. I, 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 can't, I can't live without it, it's so weird. It's so shitty, it's so unique, it's so Yamaha. Uh, JB did a very nice uh, sound set for it. I just like it, it's analog, virtual analog. By the way, all this here, it's a virtual analog uh, synthesis. Next one is um, Novation Supernova 2 with extended voice number, so it has uh, 36 uh, voice uh, capacity. Absolutely beast of... Uh, Virtual Analog Synthesizer. Okay, next one, absolutely classic uh, Virtual Analog Instrument. This is a Asus Virus KC. They just released the bad news. They finished the production of the Virus uh, series. So, sooner or later, I have to buy a Virus TI2. Make sure I will have the latest Asus Virus in my studio. Now, let's go forward. Really weirdo. This is the uh, Quasar from QuasiMIDI. I really like uh, QuasiMIDI things. This is so weird, it sounds so shit, so unique. Uh, you know what I mean. It's a, it's a cool piece of gear. Uh, there is a really nice mixer in it. There is a classical effect unit on a mixer. You can drive a four-part multi-trimbal with 64 voice polyphony, I think. Yeah, it's 64 on 16 parts. It sounds good, it sounds German, it sounds like shit, and because it's shit, it sounds good, yeah? Absolute classic, the other one, DX7 uh, Mark II. So it has two DX7 inside, maybe you can see here. Engine A, engine B. You can imagine what I can do with my uh, sound gear studio or with my oil uh, FX units. Okay, the next one, uh, classic uh, Casio, Casio CZ1. 
I checked the, the new emulation of the synthesizer is done by the um, Arturia. Sounds good. Sounds perfectly similar like this one. So I will have no problem to get rid of the, the Casio CZ1 real synthesizer and use um, the VST version of it. My Roland GD800. Nothing on a planet sounds like the GD800. Uh, Roland is not producing anymore that kind of um, sophisticated uh, digital synthesis anymore, but they have the GD800 model in the new workstation, so in uh, the Phantom or a Phantom Zero series, or even they produce now the, the GD8, which is a very small desktop version of this one. And I use the, the GD800 on money, money, money tracks. I can stay here all the day. I can play with this all the day without even eating or going to the toilet. Believe me, fantastic synthesizer. Uh, jumps to the next one, which is the uh, Roland GX10. This is actually two GX uh, GV engine inside. So it has a um, 12 voice polyphony. Yeah, 12 voice polyphony. They try to make some kind of good control for it with this alpha dial. Mm, they failed. <laughs> Miserable. Most of the guys that are getting the um, PG800 controller for it, which is sitting here. So then you can access all the analog uh, goodies and uh, port meters and knobs and switches to, to make your own preset. The PG800 controller for it alone is like 900 euro on the other days on second hand. There is a very good emulation in uh, a new Roland uh, workstation synthesizer, so this will go into a box. My guitar. It's an original Stratocaster. Mm. Uh, I bought it in Hungary. The guy was uh, completely broken. He had no money and I paid for this guitar a little good price. Of course, was some issues, electrical issues mostly. So I repaired the, the pickup and um, the port meter section. Sounds great. Sounds absolutely Stratocaster. is made in a 79 she And uh, what I'm using uh, as a pedal for it, it's a... Um, <laughs> it's a really old-fashioned multi-effect pedal with some kind of uh, spice, yeah? Digitech IBP-10. Uh, I think this was the first multi-effect pedal for guitars in the in past, like 12 years ago or something, when they utilized the iPads. So the iPad is not doing nothing with the sound. Everything is happening in a DSP inside in a unit. You even can remove the, the iPad, yeah? <laughs> so you can remove the iPad completely and then you can drive the, um, the pedal as is, standalone. Digitech made many, many really good uh, pedals, mostly time-based and modulation-based uh, pedals. So all this wah-wah and flanger and chorus and whatever, they produce the load. So what they did, all of the DSP uh, system from the old pedals are inside in the IBP-10. Let me show you the, the back side of the unit. Inputs, outputs, uh, headphones, smartphone, USB. <laughs> I don't know even uh, what is this, I have no clue. Send, return, other FX, uh, line, ground, ground lift, blah, a lot. So how it's working, you, you find your family group, then you select the setup. You can find those units on eBay for 90 euro or 80 dollars, something like this. You just have to buy a second-hand old uh, iPad. Plug the iPod, then you will get a really nice uh, mm, guitar uh, pedal system for your studio. Of course, you can get a similar uh, effect for uh, about. 1,700 with, with eight uh, slot. If you ask me for the money, you cannot get better, yeah? None of that new multi-effect uh, pedal has this big screen, like, like it's a, it's a 10 inch iPad, yeah? And next, um, Roland MV 8800. If you're producing hip hop 
or trip hop or something uh, old fashioned techno, whatever, and you want this sound of the 90s, not the AKI. You are very wrong if you are looking for an AKI. Go for this one. So what is this? This is a drum box. This is a, a, a groove box. This is a standalone DAW with the digital and MIDI channels. Let me show you so you can attach a, a monitor to it, yeah? And you have multiple inputs, multiple outputs, uh, multiple MIDI, other kind of digital, IOs, whatever. It has a really big and nice uh, beefy uh, finalizer engine, so like an FX. Uh, you can get it here like a mixer and FX. So if you go to the FX, you get this old fashioned Roland uh, finalizer thingies, which you can access from here. Uh, it's just a really great unit, 32 uh, MIDI channel. Uh, money audio channel as you want. You can see there I'm using now like four. So if you don't want to switch on your uh, DAW with monitors and mouse and whatever, you can switch on your MV8800 <laughs> with your own mouse <laughs> and with your own monitor. And you, uh, believe me, you can do great, great, great uh, hip hop songs with it. I made like uh, 10, 12 uh, full songs with that. Next one, MC909, absolute classic Roland um, uh, groove box with a uh, LP style uh, tempo controller, yeah? Unique, nothing else like this, nothing on the market. I still using it, I still love it. It has a XV synth engine inside. You can upgrade the memory, you can put inside the SRX board, you can load your own samples from the smart media. It has a USB on our backside, MIDI input output individual outputs, and I already modified uh, all outputs with some kind of Russian uh, bipolar capacitor trick technology. I made a lot of video about the MC909. Check out my videos. Mwah! There is nothing virtual analog, there is nothing virtual instruments or keyboard, whatever can replace the MC909. And it sounds super fat because it has inside this uh, mastering finalizer solution. Um, unbelievable uh, groove box, really unique. Nobody did something like this. Underneath we still have my old uh, Tascam mm, DM4800 mixer. Uh, unfortunately we have some kind of RAM or CPU issue or something, something. Uh, one guy in Netherlands, in Holland, uh, he can repair that. I think soon in one or two months I will send the unit to him, uh, try to fix it. I still didn't give up on this mixer. I really like the sound of this uh, mixer. And uh, look at this. This is absolutely classic uh, mixing uh, console with really long uh, faders, feel like a professional. All the encoders is just professional and it has this really nice uh, bar over there, the meter bridge and the, all the inputs are analog trimmed, so it's not digital trimmed, all the inputs. And it has a money money function, what nobody has even today on the market. Nowadays uh, the, the Tascam came out the, the new version of kind of this. I tried it and it's it sounds familiar, clean like this. This is made for studios, eh? 96K, 24-bit, uh, floating point uh, calculation, money digital, analog inputs, outputs, uh, bridgeable with the other DM mixer, absolutely beast. We will repair it and we will use it in a, in a new studio. I didn't give up. Now this one. It's a new baby in a studio. It's a weirdo, everybody knows that. It's a Oberheim, which is not Oberheim. So it's made by the, the, the Visconti uh, synth uh, maker from Italy. I get this one from Spain. Sounds cool, sounds good, sounds interesting and sounds like shit. So <laughs> I think we will uh, do a video about uh, some part needs to be repaired mm, soon or later. Okay guys, in a couple of months we will upload the full uh, teardown and repair of this OB12 really nice uh, synthesizer. This is a real weirdo, quasi-mini Sirius. Uh, I think everybody know this one. 
There is many really nice videos about on YouTube. JB did a really nice sound set uh, for it. I kind of like it. You cannot replace with not nothing. So unique. There is no replacement by any VST or pff, anything else. Even I have the, the really, really original, yeah, uh, <laughs> power uh, brick for it. Under that, we have uh, Alessis Ion in his original box. This one I got from Hungary from a really poor guy. Uh, unfortunately, he lost a lot of money, so he sold uh, his Ion to me. It's, it's a very limited uh, virtual analog synthesizer. It's only capable of only eight voice, but the synthesizer is beautiful and really intuitive. So the whole surface and the whole user interface is just a perfect synthesizer. So soon or later, a video will come, tear down and repair of the Alasis Ion uh, synthesizer. Uh, this is my um, DJing uh, setup. Very simple, I have here an individual computer, two set of uh, speaker, and of course an individual bass uh, subwoofer. I find this one in a garbage. <laughs> it's a Bose uh, something something, so I modified the amplifier and now it's only the subwoofer with the filter. It sounds fantastic, yeah? yeah? Of course it's connected to the big uh, song network, including the, the audio and the, the MIDI signals, whatever, but I'm Mostly I'm using this standalone, so that's why I have here a different setup only for the DJing. Make sure I don't have to switch on all this complicated system just to enjoy a little bit of uh, DJing and uh, <laughs> call back my old good memories, yeah? <laughs> oh my goodness. It has a really nice uh, CD type of uh, controller, it has a real mixer, it has a real effect engine, uh, needle search, so I feel almost like I'm playing with uh, some old uh, record players, but of course no Pioneer produced the, the new record player. I forgot the model number, I did try it, oh my god, it's just so good. So I have a plan to, to put one here and put one here, so all together I will have like a 4DEX solution. By the way, I have a 4DEX solution now, but uh, in the future this will be a real uh, 4DEX. By the way, I, I'm not a superior DJ or how I can say, I'm not a real DJ, yeah? But this is my DJing setup. Next bad boy is uh, Roland GP8000. It's absolutely classic. A virtual analog synthesizer from Roland. I bought it a few months ago in Spain again. So when I was young and this came to the market, we got so crazy about it and everybody used it for uh, trance uh, tracks and uh, house techno tracks because of the Super So, which is that one, yeah? So because of the Super So, of course, since then, money company copied the Super So synth sound but nothing is like original. So when I was young, I can't afford it, and now I get it. It's, of course, it has some issues, so this is how I got for cheap. Turned out the guy who sold it to me, he's a really famous <laughs> musician in, in uh, Barcelona, and soon we will make a repair video, and uh, soon I will explain to you guys who is this guy and what the, the track he did and why he, he, he has a name in our in industry, yeah? This cabinet is full with microphones. Um, big microphone, small microphone, preamplifier, uh, other microphone, this is microphone, this type of microphone, microphone, here, more microphone, wireless microphones, uh, AKG stereo microphone, measurement microphone, my soul tone, I made a video about this one, yeah. Sorry guys, it's still one of my favorites. <laughs> um, then um, uh, ribbon microphones, other kind of mice, uh, yeah. So all this cabinet is about microphones and I still have over there uh, other boxes full with different kind of microphones. So um, how much microphone you need in your studio? Get as much as you can, because you never know. 
one time one singer came to my studio, not here, to, to the old one, which was in Berlin on a Frankfurt Halle. She came, she sang, it was terrible. Uh, then uh, we switched to the other microphone, okay, it get a little bit better. Then we find some old microphone in a garbage, I'm not joking. We find a microphone in a garbage, I think is this was. Yeah, uh, is this one, okay? We connected to the mixer, she start to sing and it was perfect. And for example, in the jazz music, uh, this is a music store in Berlin. If you go into the jazz music, they have a box full, full with the beware uh, and uh, de demo mics and a uh, little bit with scratches, whatever, G get as much as you can. Because from microphone, you, you never get enough, yeah? One more synthesizer. This synthesizer is one of the most underrated synthesizer ever existed on planet Earth. I don't know what the aliens has, because now it's official, so the aliens existing. Yeah? <laughs> what is this? There was a time when Alessis put everything what they know about synthesizers and sound generation and effect engines and mixing and recording and multi-track recording. Yes, this company. This one. We're talking about this one, okay? And about this one. There is money analysis thing in my studio for a reason. And they put all of their knowledge with all the good samples, with all the good uh, patches, with all the good sound engineering into this workstation. Uh, just a few examples. You have headphone, you have main output, you have auxiliary output, you have digital, optical and uh, the SPDF, MIDI, true, real true, lot of uh, foot pedals, USB, the back on those days nobody did like uh, active USB for the computer. You can edit uh, the contents of the hard disk, it has inside the hard disk. You can uh, put your compact flash card to it. Then you have here something else. Multi-track audio inputs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plus external SATA. In 1998 or when they produced it, 2001 or something like this. SATA. <laughs> so <laughs> no, nobody. Believe me, nobody did this. Let's talk about the engine. Um, of course, it has a PCM based. Then it has a virtual analog. So they integrated the Alessis Ion synthesizer into that monster. But uh, now you grab your seat. 196 voice polyphony on virtual analog with modulation matrix what you never seen with uh, actually you know what i can show you uh, synth engine okay oscillator type so now it's on sample mode but i can change for drum machines and now you see the algorithm is changing i can go on virtual analog so oscillator one so it's three oscillator per voice plus uh, two internal modulation and uh, the modulation matrix is so uh, it's complicated complex so let's go back then you have the fm okay with the uh, oscillator block so if you go to the oscillator you see it's six operator okay just like the dx7 and um, but the good things about now let's talk about what is different you can apply filter on an FM, okay? So if, uh, yeah, so you can low pass, high pass, band pass, ring modulated, super 24 dB, 48 dB, <laughs> then read modeling, then wind modeling, and that's it. First kind of this class.
really nice uh, controller for the filter, yeah, for the EQ, for the arpeggiator. It has zillions of functions. You have uh, endless encoders here, function buttons, uh, really nice module, mod wheel, really nice uh, pitch wheel. And uh, the keyboard is just, is just so good. And sooner or later, I will uh, upload a video because I have not one from this unit, but I have two. <laughs> so the first one I got from Hungary for a reason, a good price and it has a small issue. So I opened it in my hotel. And I made the small issue to much more bigger issue after I fixed the small issue. Uh, so <laughs> I cannot repair it. So now I have two. I have a plan to make here a much more bigger control surface because I think the biggest mistake from the Alexis in back in the days, they concentrated so much on this uh, eight track uh, internal hard disk recorder instead of making here a really nice uh, real-time controller or here a real-time controller. Even in the past, they had a, a website for it where you can download and exchange uh, sound sets and uh, uh, patch banks with other uh, Fusion HD uh, users. Many uh, sound producers are still using it as, a, as their main keyboard because of the quality of the, of the keypad and use as a, as a, as a basic uh, uh, workstation because this is a workstation you can make a mix with it you can uh, make a song with it you can do many things with this uh, actually this is a workstation with a real 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 deep uh, synthesizer inside uh, when i opened it i saw many dsp chips on two pcb it has a, a computing capacity like a six piece of Novation Supernova inside. Uh, unbelievable uh, field, uh, underrated uh, synthesizer of, of the world. And basically, guys, that's it over there. Nothing fancy, it's just more microphone, uh, camera, jigs, cranes, uh, real-time acoustic analyzers, other acoustic tools and one cabinet full with uh, uh, cameras and lens and whatnot. And I think uh, we finished because many things now is loaded into my car. Of course, after I finish this video, I will head to the new place. So sorry for this uh, silly, long, boring video, but somebody asked on my YouTube channel what's going on with me. Um, that's it. By the way, I really like uh, my studio. This one, I think, is turned out great. Sounds great. The, uh, the sound uh, treatment is just fantastic. Everybody who came here, he said they never heard something like this in their life. Uh, it was a real, really great uh, experiment. That's it. Uh, life is changing. The priorities are changed. And um, I have not so much time to play with all of my gears and instruments and my synthesizers, but in a new place we will make uh, some kind of life which is which is different uh, from what I had until now. Uh, no, I have to drive 2,000 something kilometer. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Bye. This is my uncle, yeah, you know him. He's working like a lawyer. He's my other uncle and he is my, my brother, yeah? So this is my family. <laughs> uh, I just realized now uh, I didn't record nothing in the last half an hour. So I have to do it again. Uh, this part uh, and this part and this part. Okay, so what happened? Um, thank you, Sonny. What can I say? You are